I'm sure you're all aware of the story of The Wizard of Oz, one of the most famous films and stories in the Western world. If you really don't know the story, it doesn't matter. This is called The Wizard That Never Was, okay? Because the whole thing about The Wizard of Oz was, was this ogre. It was this little man, really. He was just a little old man, and he was pretending through pyrotechnics and pulling all these levers to make all these thundering things happen and everything that he was a big ogre on the hill and he bullied the whole town, you know, the place called Oz, the Wizard of Oz. And yet what happened in the end, they found out really, he was just a little old man. So he never really was. <laughs> and there's a great parallel in this between the people of Oz, what they were living under, and what we live under in our minds, you know. And what we find is that the thing that encases us and the thing that dominates us, the thing that bullies us around, is like a wizard. It's just trying to play a game. And if we can come out from under that game, we can, all you've got to do is find out that it's not real. It's just an idea. And then we start to get free of the whole thing. It's very difficult sometimes to think, well, get free of what? What are you talking about? And it's very much like two fish in a fishbowl, you know, one of them's saying, you know, I just don't feel right at the moment, you know, and uh, the other fish says, well, I think it's the water. There's some tension in the water, you know. And the first fish says, yeah, but what water, you know? The fish is so used to living in water in its world that it can't conceive of another world. And quite often in our lives, we get so used to the drama and the thoughts and the ideas and the storyline, the narrative of our lives, that we don't think there could be another life. But, you know, I'm saying these talks like this to punctuate that idea in your life, to try and break through, to say, hey, 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 you can crack this thing, you know. There's something else out there. You've probably smelt it, you've seen it, you feel it. Something in you says, you know, there's something else out there. Surely it can't just be like this, you know. One of the things that made me keep looking, made me, even in spite of so many difficulties in my life, was um, there was this sense, I had a lot of powerful dreams when I was a little boy, that seemed to be pointing towards something, you know. I don't know whether that's very common, but that's what it was with me. Um, but then I remember coming out of a long stint in Borstal. Um, it was nearly two years I was in there. I was only supposed to be in for eight months, and it was just a big, bad time. I was bad, and I was always in solitary confinement, and having time added on, and, oh, it was just bad. And I was as bad as can be, you know. In the end, they pretty much threw me out of the place. And... Um, when I got out, I sat at my mother's kitchen table, and I was numb, you know. I, I, um, I figured I'd get out and I'd be, you know, I'm back out there, you know. But I wasn't. I was very subdued and broken, really. Uh, but I sat at her table and I said, you know, there's something about all this. It's almost as if, like, this is meant to be. My life was meant to be this way. And for some reason, I've got to figure it out, you know. And it really, really ran deep with me that. And it also ran deep with me that when I figured it out for me, I'm going to figure it out for other people. Not that I'll be their boss or anything like that, but the answers that I find will be their answers too. You know, I just knew it inside myself. And that's why I think I kept hanging on. And sometimes the picture in my mind, because later on when I did sort my life out and went on, I had a great job in outdoor pursuits and I did a lot of rock climbing. And sometimes that used to really remind me of, of my attitude towards life and going through those days. Because sometimes, I remember one time in North Wales, I was on a particularly big rock going up, and I just didn't put enough kit in the wall for protection. And I got up onto this place, and suddenly I couldn't go up, and I couldn't go down, and I couldn't go left, and I couldn't go right. The only other place was down, and it was a long way, and it was like... You know, rock climbers are not without fear, you know. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, you know. And, and my fingers are aching. I'm in pain. And my toes, you're hanging on by tiny things. And I'm way up there. And, and, and so all the possibilities run through your mind. You're just, oh, you're going you're gonna to fall. You're going to, you know, panic like that. But you can't afford to do that. You've got to stay calm and you've got to figure the thing out, you know. 
And so I think there was some of that going on in my life. And obviously, I'm here. I didn't peel off. In fact, the story was, there was a little slither of rock that was no bigger than my thumbnail. And I saw it, and I was like, oh my God, I'm going to have to take a chance here. Because otherwise, it'll just fall off. I had to put my weight onto this tiny thing. There was no way I knew <laughs> whether it would hold me. And that little ability to do that meant I could just get a hold of something else over there. Get your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like floating through the sky on this rock and I got off you know still remember it and um, I remember sometimes watching movies and uh, there'd be a big battle going on it was really looking bad and the and there's the radio guy with the big radio on his back and he'd be giving coordinates and bringing in an airstrike or saying we need to pull back and somebody you know and all this and you think one of the things that really impressed me about that was how could somebody stay calm when there's bombs going off and everything's going crazy, you know? But that's what we have to do. And I think that's what I did in my life because I think it was because I had that sense that you've got to figure this out, you know? You've got to figure it out. I remember John Nash in that film, Beautiful Mind, he did the same thing. His life was colossally falling apart. Everything was a big mess and he was all over the place. And yet he said, I can figure this out, I can. And he went through storms, he went through, and I did after Borstal, I went back to prison twice, but I somehow kept at it and figured it out, you know. Anyway, let me just bring this story right where it needs to go. Um, I'm one of these people as well, when I, when I broke out of the shell and got my life together and everything else, there was a sense that heaven inside me knew that I could go anywhere and do anything. And so long story short, I jumped on a plane and I went to New York. I wasn't supposed to go there. And I wasn't supposed to go to Canada. And I went to Canada too. And then had to come back to the, the America through Canada again. So I kind of broke through three major big things in my life, which didn't make any sense. I wasn't supposed to be allowed in or anything. I just did it and I got in. And I thought, wow, you know, wow. So anyway, I did something even more dramatic a few years later, and then I took my wife and my children, and we all went to live there. We lived there for over five years. And, uh, and it was like a proving ground. You know, have you really come up into another place? Have you really uh, entered into another realm of life? Well, let's prove it, you know? So it's proven, it's done, you know? I don't need to wear that jacket anymore. But when I got back from New York, we moved back into England, and we lived in a, in a village and, um, and my kids were growing up and they needed things and, you know, bills were coming in and I couldn't figure out a job. And, I, you know, I was trying to get used to being back and it was just difficult. And what happened was I started to be tormented, you know, started to be tormented in my mind about things, you know, like a bill would come in and then it would change from being a bill to something that was going on at me and then something else and something else. And then one day, my kids had gone out, I uh, think they were at school, and my wife was going somewhere, and I just about had enough. And I have those moments, I just about had enough. And I went out the house, it was raining, it was freezing cold, the dog, I wrapped the dog up, he came with me, I had a big stick, and I walked out, and I was just really getting angry, because I was saying, you know, who's picking on me here? You know, what's this all about? There's something out there, and it's picking on me. And I don't like it, you know. And so what happened was, um, I even whacked a tree with a stick and I thought, why don't you just come out and show yourself, you know. At least let me fight back, you know. You can't just pick on me. It was like as if something outside was picking on me, you know. So what I did was, I, I just didn't know what else to do. I grabbed hold of this gate, jumped into this field, ripped my trousers, cut my leg. I'm in the rain, I'm soaking wet. And then I got really angry, you know, because all I could think of was like, you know, it was, I, it just seemed like something outside of me. And I said, you know, it just might be that there's only God and there's only the devil. And that's what everyone seems to believe. And you, and just, you know, you're omnipresent and omniscient and all the rest of it. And you're picking on me, you know, someone's picking on me. So let's pretend that you, you devil, you know, everyone who's scared of you, everyone who's like, oh, scary movies and evil and all the rest of it well i tell you why well, here i am you know instead of talking to me all day boring me to death why don't you do what you say you're gonna do why don't you come and just incinerate me show me what you've got P appear in the field come to me show me now what you've got and i was getting really mad and i could feel my mind saying to me 
whoa, where are you going here? You know, you're going to get struck down. This is, this is dangerous ground. But there I was, and I was in a, getting angry, and I was shouting, you know, I said, come on. I said, you know, I, I'm not standing here taking a shot from you for nothing. Why should I? It's not right, you know, it's not fair. So there we were. All of a sudden, there was like a silence. And I was breathless, and I was waiting. I really did think, <laughs> if it's true what everyone says in the churches all over the world and everywhere else, that someone's going to find my boots with smoke coming out the top where I got incinerated by the devil in the field. But you know what? It was all quiet. And I stood there with the rain pouring down my face, there's blood going down my leg, and I'm like, <sighs> and then it dawned on me. Something, something clicked. I said, you know what? I just realized, you know, if you could, if you could do anything to me, you would have done it. But you can't. And the reason I know you can't is because you keep talking about it, but you're not doing it. And I said, another penny dropped. I said, that's because you've got no power whatsoever. I don't know what you are or who you are, but you've got no power. Because I'm the one with the power. You know, if I decide, if I believe something, if I'm the one, I'm the one who, who comes to a conviction, then I'm the one with the power. You're not the one with the power. And once again, I was thinking, whoa, you're really pushing your luck. It's like as if I picked on the big guy, you know. So there I am. And then I felt like the cheekiest person in the whole universe. And I said to what might be God, you know, I said, it's the same with you, isn't it? You know, you might love me or whatever. I don't know. I don't really understand what you are or anything properly. But you can't push me around. You can't make things happen. You might, you might uh, say little things to me, but I'm the one who's pulling the strings here. I'm the one who's making it all happen. And I tell you what, what a day. What a difference that made in my life. And you could ask yourself, well, what difference did it make? You know, well, this, this is what it did, okay? I needed to run my family. I mean, needed just to get by. Simple as that. And every day, for, for like a few weeks it went on, um, all these fears kept coming up. But you have to remember, just like I've spoken about before, what was coming up is only records of the past. You know, there was something like these represent discs in a jukebox, you know, music in a jukebox. The, mu the jukebox can only play what's inside of it. And I started to notice that the language of the jukebox that was going on inside of me was the same as it had been over for years and years. The same old story, the same old churning, the same old this and the same old threat. You're going to suffer shame, your guilt and all this. It was the same old story. And, and it's by staying calm. I know I, I know I got mad at the thing on that day. But what I mean is in a general sense, staying calm and looking at it, you start to realize it's the same old violin. It's the same old trumpet and the same old tune. It's the same old rubbish. It's all, and it's all from the past. You see, it's dead. All these things happened years ago. These things don't exist. But the only life they can have is like a parasite. And that is if I believe them, and I take them on because they seem so real. They seem so real because I'm so familiar with what happened in the past. I'm so, I so know it that now I can make that come back to life and I can be the expression of it, you know? And that's a real parasite. Those things in that jukebox are a parasite. They, they, they don't care how miserable you are. They don't care how, how suddenly you feel depressed. They don't care that you're not very nice with your children because you can't afford anything. They don't care no holiday, no birthdays, no Christmas. They don't care about anything as long as they can be there. And it reminds me very much of like a disease, you know, you can go in and there's somebody and they've got a disease and they're, they're sort of uh, in bad shape and you can walk in and have a conversation and say, oh, hello, um, how are you? And, and there's the woman there, oh, you know, she's dying. And, these, and then you can look at the disease and say, oh, right, um, so what's the plan? What are you doing? And the disease says, well, we have to win. We have to control her, you know. And you say, well, yeah, yeah, okay. But uh, she's not looking very well. So you've got your way. So where do we go from here? And it says, 
well, we have to win. And you're like, well, hang on a minute. See, there's no rationalization here, is there? Nothing. It can't think properly. And you're saying, well, yeah, I, got, I see what you're saying, but she's going to die soon. And if she dies, guess what? You die, you know? So what's plan B? And it says, we have to win. And you're like, oh, like that. So same thing. You know, when the records start to play, a lot of people who are alcoholics and things, they'll say, I can cope with drinking. Drinking's not so bad. But what I can't cope with is no drinking because the records start to play and I don't know what to do with myself. And you've got people who've got loads of money, they've got everything they need and everything else, and they drink and drink and drink. They sit at home drinking and they don't know what to do with themselves because they're stuck with records and they don't realize they're only records. But what you've got to do one day is realize it's just a record, okay? Now, I did say at the beginning of this talk that the Wizard of Oz in this talk is called The Wizard That Never Was, okay? Which I find is funny. It's a chapter in my second book. And the reason why we call it The Wizard That Never Was is because when I was coming under all that attack and everything else, you're going to this, da 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 and it's trying, to, it's trying to create a narrative in my life that doesn't exist. It's not there. It's just dragging things in and creating a story that is not happening but it would be very easy to believe because it's so emotional and it's so familiar. It's been there before. And so the wizard is the same. The wizard would just see the people down in the town and he'd say, you know, I I'm bored. I I'm going to control them. I and so he'd shout down his big megaphone, you people. And he'd pull these levers and the fireworks would go off and thunder would clap and all this. And he probably had them bringing their crops to the doorstep as a homage for, for God. Otherwise, terrible things may happen, you know. And then one day, of course, in the film, in the book, um, Dorothy runs in and opens the curtain. You know, she's had enough. <laughs> and she was brave and so she opens the curtain and then realizes he's not a monster it's just a little old bitter cynical old man who's playing a game so but even though that sounds like a joke if you think of it in real terms those people once they hear the news well their life's going to change they don't have to listen to that anymore so what if you start to realize that these records that are playing are no more real than the Wizard of Oz? You don't have to listen to them anymore. And how do you stop them from bleating off? I mean, if those people ignored the wizard on the hill, okay, will he stop shouting? No, he won't, because he's like a disease. He can't rationalize. He, he doesn't know how to stop. He, he doesn't know how to stop being who he is, you know? So let's forget about him and what, what happens to the record. I've got records inside of me to this day. They're in there, okay? But I don't pay any attention to them. So they might try to play and I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Like this. And so what you're doing is you're creating a gap. You're making a distinction. And this is the greatest thing we can do. You know, I seem to spend a lot of time talking about creating the gap, creating the distinction, because you have to realize that if you stand there and you realize, you know, what is that? You know, that's not me. You know, that's not me saying all this. I wouldn't say them wake up in the morning and want to give myself a hard time. And, and besides that, it's all fluff. It's not real anyway. <laughs> Why do I want to give myself such a hard time? You know, and that's why people drink like they do. That's why people take drugs like they do. It's, it's why we're miserable when we should be okay because everything seems to be okay. It's just how something's turning inside, you know? And, what, and the thing that defeats it is simply knowing. Those people in Oz, they would have realized that, the, that there was no ogre and it couldn't, it couldn't pull it off. It couldn't carry out the threats. And that was the same with me. When I was getting tormented, I started to realize this was all rubbish. This couldn't carry anything out. And my, my retort, you could say, what, what I said to, the, to whatever was saying these things, I didn't know it was a devil or anything. Uh, what I was saying was, well, if you can pull it off, do it, show me. 
don't talk all day. You know, don't, talk is cheap. You know, where I come from, you can only talk for so long and now you're going to have to show me. Don't threaten me all the time. Show me, show me. It all went quiet, see. Couldn't show me. And so what I'm trying to say is that we make the distinction. But the big question is, who's the one who's now watching the record? Who's the one who sees the wizard? Well, that's who you really are. And that's the one who doesn't have a problem. And just to end this little talk, I went back home that day. Nobody could see any difference in me. I was daddy to my kids. My wife's husband I had neighbours, and I was <laughs> liberated. These things are trying to creep up on me. They're always trying to creep up on you. And what happened was, the, the record, these records are so stupid, right? They'll keep playing the tune, even if you know it's not true. They'll treat, keep trying the same old stupid story all the time. And the same old emotion, like that. So you have to have your wherewithal. You've got to be able to hang on to the rock. When the pressure's on, you've got to be able to stake with the radio. When the bombs are going off and there's shooting going on, there's people going down, you've got to stay calm and you've got to realize that this is not real. And that's why I said all those things, because it's not real, okay? And what I personally did at that time, I don't know what you may do, but this is what I did. I decided to do the opposite of what I was being told. So mine was trying to say to me, you're going to be ruined, you're going to be embarrassed, people are going to laugh at you, because you're no good. <laughs> it's just stupid, isn't it? Like that. But it came up very emotional. You know, I, I was ducking and diving there for a while, and I decided to relax. And I did. I can still remember it very well. I decided to do the opposite. I said, well, I'll tell you what, as soon as I heard it come up, I said, tell you what, I'll go and make a cup of tea, I'll sit down, I'll drink the tea, and I'm going to watch and see how you're going to do this. How are you going to pull this off? Because without me, I don't think you're going to be able to pull anything off. And then another one would come up. Oh, here we go again. I'd sit down. I wouldn't go running. I'd sit down. And I'd say, well, well I can hear what you're saying. How are you going to do this? Because I don't think you can do it without me. I'm the one with the power. You, you just got a voice. You're just a voice. And that's it. That voice, those records from the past, all those things, are a parasite. The only life they can live is the one that you are. And so if you want to be a replication and a new version of an old story that's miserable and a failure and a disaster, then that's what they want to do. But if, but, but if you make the distinction, you can walk away and be who you are.